Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. If you've been watching our channel for a while now, you might remember that earlier this year, we covered a few stories from the dark side of the fast food industry. More specifically, we told you about three instances where employees of these companies were the victims of terrible crimes. As you know, we occasionally like to revisit past themes to explore even more cases that we didn't have time for in earlier videos. So today, we thought we would bring you two more similarly terrifying stories involving fast food workers. Just a heads up, if you haven't seen our other videos from the earlier fast food series, be sure to check those out next. We'll leave links in the description below. Before we get to the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this. It really helps us to continue building the channel, and if you've watched a few of our videos already, you might not even realize that you're not subscribed. While you're there, don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. With that out of the way, here is part one of two more terrifying crimes targeting fast food workers. At approximately 5 a.m. on the morning of January 26, 1991, police in Irving, Texas pulled over two teenagers traveling in a Mazda pickup truck near the neighborhood of Hillcrest Oaks. The routine traffic stop was initiated after officers suspected that the vehicle's occupants, 19-year-old Jesse Carlos San Miguel and 17-year-old Jerome Mike Green, were driving drunk. However, when the officers conducted a search of the trunk, they soon realized that they weren't dealing with a simple DUI. Inside a Taco Bell takeout bag in the vehicle, police found $1,390 in cash, along with two ski masks, two pairs of gloves, and a 9mm handgun. The alarming discovery prompted Irving police to check in with the city's five Taco Bell restaurants to see if any of them had been the scene of a robbery. The search eventually led them to the company's airport freeway location, about a mile and a half from where San Miguel and Green had been pulled over. When police arrived at the restaurant just before dawn, they found cars sitting in the parking lot. The building's doors were locked, but the lights were on, suggesting that employees might still be inside. This was unusual since the last shift of the restaurant had ended more than two hours earlier. The dining area of the Taco Bell closed at 11 p.m. nightly, but the drive through window stayed open until 3 a.m. Though there were no signs of forced entry into the building, upon closer inspection, police noticed that the restaurant's safe was open. It was at that point that they decided to force their way in through the drive through window. No one was prepared for what they would find inside. In the restaurant's walk-in freezer, police discovered the bodies of four people. 28-year-old Michael Phelan, 16-year-old Teresa Fraga, 23-year-old Frank Fraga, and 35-year-old Son Trong Nguyen. All of them had been shot execution style at least once in the head or the back. The scene was so chilling that one of the first officers on the scene fainted at the sight of the bodies. There was reportedly so much blood that investigators needed to use a squeegee on the floor to find the spent shell casings from the murder weapon. With the exception of Sun Nguyen, all of the victims had been employees of the airport freeway Taco Bell location. Michael Phelan was the restaurant's assistant manager, a four-year veteran of the Air Force who had first started working for Taco Bell in 1987. Tragically, he had only been working at the specific location since October and was scheduled to be moved to a different store in the coming weeks. On the morning of the killings, Michael's wife of five years, Linda, had become concerned about him and drove down to the Taco Bell only to find the place swarming with police and covered in crime scene tape. The stories of the restaurant's other employees were equally heartbreaking. Teresa and Frank Fraga were cousins who had started working at the Taco Bell location a short time apart. Teresa had been hired first and had then helped Frank get a job too. They had grown up in a tight-knit family from Dallas and had essentially been raised as brother and sister. Gut-wrenchingly, both of them were the parents of young children, and Teresa was several months pregnant at the time of her death. Sun Nguyen was a family friend of Fraga's, an immigrant to the United States who had formerly served in the army in South Vietnam and who had come to America for a better life. He had gone to pick Teresa up from work that morning and appeared to have simply been in the wrong place at the wrong time. After San Miguel and Green were pulled over, both teenagers were arrested and taken to the police station for questioning. Over the course of interviews on two separate days, San Miguel would confess to all four murders, recounting the chilling details to investigators. The motive for the crime had been robbery, and the teens had chosen the specific Taco Bell location because Green worked there part-time. Knowing what time the restaurant would close that January morning, San Miguel and Green waited by a door until one of the employees took out the trash. After that, they forced their way in and ordered Michael to hand over the contents of the safe. 
While waiting for the restaurant's time release lock on the safe, Green and San Miguel noticed Sun Win waiting in his car in the parking lot. They ordered him out of the vehicle and marched him into the restaurant with the other victims. All of them were soon forced into the restaurant's walk-in freezer. Disturbingly, San Miguel told investigators that once he and Green had the money, they initially left. However, at some point he decided to go back inside. He went into the freezer and proceeded to ask the terrified victims to give him a good reason not to kill them, after which he shot all of them to death. According to police, he later told an officer while in jail that he had killed the Taco Bell employees because they didn't know how to make good Mexican food. The gruesome details of the case prompted some to question whether Taco Bell had taken appropriate measures to ensure the safety of their employees. In an interview with a local newspaper, Teresa Fraga's mother seemed to call out the dangerous conditions of her daughter's low-paying job, saying, quote, she was paid $4.05 an hour. I don't think that was worth her death. Further validating these concerns was the fact that five other people had been killed during the late shift at fast food restaurants in Dallas County within the previous two months. One of these incidents involved the murder of another assistant manager at a Taco Bell restaurant just three weeks earlier. The fact that none of these incidents were related arguably made the situation all the more terrifying. For their part, Taco Bell responded by saying that they had conducted a review of their security protocols and found that they were more than adequate. In an interview just two days after the tragic killings in Irving, Taco Bell spokesman Elliot Bloom said, quote, We have a very, very comprehensive security program in place with security managers in the field, but we cannot give specific details. As a side note, the families of the four victims would eventually be given $8.25 million in a settlement after they had filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Taco Bell in 1993. Despite his earlier confessions to police, San Miguel decided to go to trial and he and Green were each charged with four counts of capital murder. In June of 1991, the case went to court, though it was only for the murder of Michael Phelan. In our research, we were not able to uncover a clear reason as to why this was the case. However, some articles we found seemed to suggest that Phelan's murder was prioritized because he was the person in charge of the money at the restaurant and this would give prosecutors the best chance of obtaining a death penalty conviction. The evidence in the case was fairly overwhelming. Not only were police armed with San Miguel's signed confessions, but he was caught with the cash stolen from the Taco Bell on the morning of the murders, and the gun found in his possession matched the shell casings discovered at the crime scene. San Miguel was also found with blood on his clothing when he was initially pulled over by police. In addition to this, San Miguel had a long criminal history. At the age of just 19, he had already been arrested on nine different occasions. In fact, he had been released from jail on a $45,000 bond less than two weeks before the killings at the airport freeway Taco Bell. Two of the charges he was awaiting trial for at the time were for burglary. On June 20th, 1991, Jesse Carlos San Miguel was convicted of the capital murder of Michael Phelan. Six days later, he was sentenced to death by a jury after less than three hours of deliberation. The sentence was welcomed by both Michael's wife Linda and the families of the other three victims in the case. In an Associated Press article at the time, Linda was quoted as saying, It's hard to put someone to death, but he deserved it. Over the next few years, San Miguel appealed his conviction and sentence numerous times. In the appeals, he argued that he had been unfairly convicted due to biases and stereotypes about his Mexican-American heritage that he claimed had been introduced by both the prosecution and his own lawyer at trial. However, with each attempt, San Miguel's arguments were dismissed by courts and his conviction was upheld. On June 29, 2000, San Miguel was executed via lethal injection at the Walls Unit in Huntsville, Texas. Unlike the high-profile execution of inmate Gary Graham a week earlier, his case failed to attract significant attention from anti-death penalty advocates. In a final statement, San Miguel urged his family members to stay strong. He did not acknowledge any of the family members of the victims who were present, nor did he apologize for the killings. He was pronounced dead at 6.19 p.m. Unlike San Miguel, Jerome Mike Green eventually accepted a plea deal in the case and was spared the death penalty in exchange for his guilty plea. He was sentenced to 50 years in prison and remains incarcerated at the Wynn Unit, which is also located in Huntsville. According to inmate records we were able to find, he was most recently denied parole last year and will not be eligible for review again until 2024. If he fails to obtain parole, he could remain in prison until August of 2043. Do you know of any other cases like this that you think we should check out? Tell us about them in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.